Good afternoon, Muskies. I'm Hope Forgus. And I'm Melissa Meds. From the Xavier University Television Studio, this is Xavier News. Between the U.S. and Russia rose Thursday over the fate of the Ukraine as a Kremlin official accused Washington of crudely interfering in the former Soviet Republic. The Obama administration fired blame at Moscow for spreading a taped private conversation between two American diplomats. The conversation commented on a new potential government to replace the pro-Russian cabinet of Ukrainian President Viktor Yanovich and appeared on Twitter by an aide to the Russian Deputy Prime Minister. This contest has escalated since November when the President of Ukraine accepted a $15 million loan from Moscow, which American officials are now trying to settle. The country has deep roots to Russia, but are yearning to join the rest of Europe. More than 70 years after the Holocaust, a trinket of Anne Frank has found light. A group of colorful marbles that belong to Frank will go on display at a World War II exhibition in Rotterdam. Frank entrusted the keepsakes to friend Tuesday Coopers for protection before separating. CNN reports that after the liberation of Jews in the concentration camps, Loop Coopers offered the return of the mar marbles to her father, Otto, the sole survivor of the Franks. Otto allowed the girl to keep them. Coopers rediscovered them in her attic a year ago while moving and donated them along with Anne's book and tea set to the Anne Frank house. A Tennessee girl died from being forced to drink soda. Five-year-old Alexis Lindblom was brought to the emergency room January 1, 2012 by her father and his wife. Randall and Mary Vaughn now face a murder charge after an investigation revealed the girl had been forced to drink more than two liters of grape soda and water, causing her brain to rupture from swelling. According to the autopsy report, the girl was blue and unresponsive at an abnormal body posture that indicates severe brain damage. The Vaughns were arrested Wednesday and are being held at the Hawkins County Jail on a $500,000 bond each. The girl siblings have been in DCS custody since February of 2013. The new semester meant new opportunity for many Xavier students at the Spring Involvement Fair. Here's more with Drew Tanner. On January 22nd, the Xavier Student Activities Council held its Spring Involvement Fair, where the school's clubs and organizations met to show off various clubs and recruit new members. The event is Spring Semester's version of Club Day on the Yard. Over 160 organizations participated in the fair, including Club Sports, Manresa Orientation Crew, the Television Association, and Colleges Against Cancer. New to this year's fair was a bingo game where students had to visit certain booths to fill out the card and win. SAC will offer the game at future fairs to increase interest and acknowledges the fair as an important event. If you would like to get involved on campus, contact Dustin Lewis, Associate Director in the Office of Student Involvement, or join orgsync.com to browse all the clubs Xavier has to offer. At Gallagher Student Center, I'm Andrew Tanner, Xavier News. Cincinnati's civil rights pioneer, Judge William McLean, died Tuesday at the age of 101. McLean became a member of the Bar of Ohio in 1951 after being denied membership two prior times. In 1963, the judge was the first African-American solicitor of a major city in the U.S. Twelve years later, McLean went on to become the first black judge to serve on the Hamilton County Police Court. And in 1997, Judge McLean received the Ellis Island Medal of Honor given to ancestral groups who endure struggle, sacrifice, and success to help build our great nation. Three local high school students will be sentenced today after pleading guilty for firing two stolen guns and stealing a car. The Lakota West High School boys pleaded guilty to stealing two guns and firing them in a basement during a home burglary. The three boys, ages 17, 17, and 16, stole a car from the garage and left the scene. 
Two of the boys pleaded guilty for burglary. The other pleaded guilty for attempting to receive stolen property. A neighbor reported the crime and police picked up the three in the stolen vehicle. Earlier this week, our sports anchor set out to discover how Xavier's athletic trainers keep our athletes moving in perfect condition. Here's Allie with more. Students motivated to stick with their New Year's resolutions. Angela Sims was hired for her certifications in TRX and HIT athletic training and has brought a new energy to the gym. What makes my class a little bit more different than other classes at Xavier is that I'm a certified personal trainer. So through all my training I've been able to develop skills and know how to build on different body sets. So it's not necessarily doing a total body workout that will get you an advantage. It's focusing on certain areas at certain times. So combined sets will be mostly abs or mostly arms and then we'll move on to like legs or something like that. I'm also able to tell when the class is struggling and how to modify it to benefit them rather than hurt them. So it's more of a personalized class. And because smaller numbers take the class here at Xavier, it really is more beneficial for them to come to my class versus a larger group class. My favorite part of Angela's class is how challenging it is, but at the same time, she's really motivational. So you feel like you want to give up, but you, you can't because she's there pushing you and you know that you know, you're going to benefit in the end. Ready? Angela also works with sports teams and personal clients, and her experience makes her one of the top trainers on campus that knows how to push each individual student. In order to keep my class motivated, it's a lot easier than it seems. It's just making sure you're telling them they're doing a good job the entire time. They're keeping it up. Come on, do a couple more. You can do a couple more. So I want you to come to Angela's class because um, coming into the new year, a lot of people are like, yeah, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna lose weight. But this year, I really wanna actually do that and you know, push through. I think a lot of college students fall into regimes where they are just like eating unhealthy and you know, they're like, yeah, we're gonna work out. And maybe they go once a week, but you know, it's not enough. So I think Angela's a good motivator to do that and follow through. Angela's classes are every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and every Thursday at noon. From Xavier News, I'm Allie Martin. Trayvon Martin's acquitted killer, George Zimmerman, is facing the spotlight once more. The spotlight of a boxing ring, that is. Damon Feldman, who is the owner of Celebrity Boxing, selected rapper DMX out of thousands of email requests to face Zimmerman in a three-round pay-per-view fight. DMX told tabloid TMZ that he will break every rule in boxing as he is, quote, out for blood, end quote. The controversial matchup is sparking feedback. Reverend Al Sharpton commented on the match, stating that Zimmerman's only claim to fame was, quote, killing an unarmed young man named Trayvon Martin, end quote. There has not been an official deal made, but details will be available to the public shortly. Well, that's all from this desk. We'll be right back with Allison in the Sports Report.
Friday, Muskie fans. I'm Allison Martin, and welcome to another edition of the Xavier Sports Report. In primetime, the men's and the women's tennis teams have captured their first wins of the spring season. And in addition, senior Messime was also awarded the Big East Player of the Week after his promising start with clutch victories in singles and doubles this past weekend. The men took home a close 4-3 win against Binghampton, with Adam Kroll leading the Muskies with an easy 6-2, 6-1 win. However, not far behind was Mesa May and Jeremy Schneider in singles positions, also bringing home the win in straight sets. The doubles teams looked just as promising, captured two, capturing two of three with May and Jimmy Ropker capping off the Muskies with a win. As for the women, they captured their first 5-2 victory against Abilene. The singles captured wins on four out of the six courts with easy straight set wins from Sydney Liggins and Lizzie Osterban. The doubles teams, however, made the difference for the Muskies. ACU had tough, aggressive players for all three doubles courts, but the Lady Muskies were able to battle back and capture victories on two of the three courts. Next, the ladies take on Eastern Kentucky today at 7 p.m. Now switching over to the basketball court, the women's basketball team has uh, continued to struggle, and against DePaul past weekend, they fell. The girls played a tough first half, keeping themselves in the game and heading into the locker room with only a two-point deficit. However, the Blue, Demon, Blue Demons took advantage of the Muskies' full-court press in the second half and went on a 30-2 and two run, ending any chance for a, a Xavier comeback. This loss brings the Lady Muskies to 8-15 overall and 3-8 and in the Big East. They will next hit the road to take on Georgetown this Saturday at 4 p.m. And unfortunately, the struggle has been just as real for the men's basketball team as it was and has been for the women's. Uh, Xavier currently is, is on a three-game losing streak after falling to Providence, Seton Hall, and Villanova. In the Villanova game on Wednesday, the Muskies kept it relatively close shortly after the half with Justin Martin hitting a big three. However, Villanova wasn't having it and fired back with a 15-4 run to take control of the game. Unfortunately, Xavier was unable to recover after the run, and they ended the game with an 81-58 loss. The men look to take another stab at Providence this Saturday in the Sindas Center at 3 p.m. So come on out, help cheer on the Muskies to victory this weekend. Well, that's it for another edition of the Xavier Sports Report. Good luck to all our Xavier athletes this weekend. On behalf of everyone in the studio, I'm Allison Martin. Have a good weekend.